indeed. Right, okay, so we've now unlocked some new materials for Dragon's Rest, which is going to start coming into play a little bit later, but not right now. But as for our main group, we are going to... Oh, uh, well, we were going to continue all the way down, but uh, okay, we've got a, a ruin... An unliving crypt and a spider's lair, all close together. And I, I should probably deal with them. I really need to get better at not just rushing down into the darkness, because then all of a sudden I miss a bunch of things that we could do. Oh, we got some gold from that. Nice. That uh, wishing well is doing quite well for us. And it was definitely worth going up to, you know, using the materials we needed to get to the, the ability to get second tier stuff. Because gold, second tier. Ruby, second tier. Quite a lot of the stuff we've gotten out of that well so far actually has ended up being second tier, which is really, really nice. Well, I had to step away for a while. Left at the point where the Lady of the Lake vanished. What have I missed? Okay, Akira Dragomon, you've not missed much. We've actually more or less just just uh, come down here. We've dealt with... <laughs> we had the quest, again, of the guy stuck down the pit who didn't give us the reward that was promised after sending a snake and a bear up at us, though, honestly, I, just, I we've decided that that was a Jeff, and uh, that we were unwittingly breaking someone out of Jeff jail. I, I mean, it, it wasn't as clearly signposted as one might assume a Jeff jail would be signposted, but all other details do seem to check out. Also, we had a tea break. Right, okay. The Jeff in the hole didn't so much scare the animals out of the hole, probably just annoyed them out of the hole. It was probably trying to convince the bear that it was bearing wrong and that he knew how to bear better. It's usually how Jeffs are. Right. Let us deal with the spider's lair. Oh, right, we missed it. Oh, uh, we don't get an option to... Okay, that's... The... Whoa. Well, you're going to jump into this one. This actually might be a bit of a threat. It is a tier 3 fight, but... Oof. Okay, first down. Obviously. Let's smack the world with uh, earthquakes. A little bit concerned about these spiders, though. They're going to be able to do some nasty damage, I imagine. Uh... I can roll in with true uh, damage and life leech, but not against you. That wouldn't make as much sense. A headbutt against you would be amazing. Your weapon, like... <laughs> it says something when Abacalypticon, our warrior... With a not a bad weapon, it's, it was it's the actual quest reward from the the whole King Arathor Knights of Camroth Lady of the Lake quest line does less damage than Abacalypticon headbutting someone. <laughs> Say what you will about Abacalypticon, they have got a very dense skull. It'll also add six seconds. <laughs> It'll daze someone for six seconds worth of days. That's that's pretty pretty potent, can be honest. Um, let's drop down. Um, well, we've been leveling up your unliving rat, but this is going to take health off you. I don't like the idea of that. I think we're going to hold off on that one. Um, I could bring in a race. You've got a decent ring for the race, to be fair. Um, go on. We'll bring the race in. Oh, is this about a ring wraith? Indeed. Uh, right, now with you, and I could bring a spider in, counter spider. Uh, but I think... 
Instead, we're just going to speed up Dark Avac. And increase damage. Then we're going to pass the turn. Right now, Dark Avac will wipe everything out on the board if he moves first. So I don't see much reason to do anything but make that happen. And I'm going to double buff Dark Avac because we are still going to have a second phase. So now he's up to 41 damage per hit. Which means each of these characters is going to take um, 82 damage because he's going to hit both instances of them. Up, oh, Balls. Ah, oh, no. I failed to... Uh, swap him around, but never mind. It seems that it didn't matter. Because we'd spared him up so much, but oh well. That was that was a big mistake. I clicked on end turn with a cog there, which I was reserving for his ability. That was silly of me. Oh well. Let's get Dark Havoc in play. And sadly, they those don't carry over to the next battle. More basic spiderlings. Let's uh, further buff Dark Havoc. Now, what I'm going to try and do is I will save two points. One character who can summon a, a, an ally and the ability to switch it with Dark Avax's turn. Um, I guess I could play Abacalypticon, but honestly, not much reason to. Now, the reason why I'm going to keep my summon until the last moment is because, as you saw there, they can actually use abilities on the summons. And if they do, they can slow the summons down. It's not what I wanted to see happen. At this point, Dark Avic is now doing 49 damage. And it's already the first character that's going to take a turn. But they could still use their last turn to slow him down a bit. Um, now, nah, we're just going to go all in on Dark Avic right now. There we go. Now does 53 points of damage to every enemy on the field. Or in their case, to twice to each person. And it's almost as fast as possible in the game. There is the uh, Spider Queen. Oh, no, no, that's not a Spider Queen. That's a Blood Spider, I believe, actually. Okay. And at this point, he may actually... Oh, well, unfortunately, even though on the battlefield, that'll attack everyone, when it comes to cards in the deck, it'll only hit one at a time. There's... Oh, no, that can't be the spider. Is that, is that the spider queen? It might be. It's possible. Are they moving first? Unless it does something to slow Dark Avic down, I don't need to worry about how it uses its turn. I think it really only has one card to play. Up to 67 damage now. Wow. Okay, got some ancient wood there, some more herbs. Very nice. Okay, Rotrain asked, uh, Abak, I'm related to the stream, but have you seen the FTL Multiverse mod? I haven't, but I have seen you mentioning it a couple of times in uh, in the Dapper Dell. Being bombarded by videos of it, and have decided to take a look. Now I'm stuck binging it, and it adds so much stuff. I think you'd love it, personally. As for how I'd advertise it, 12 pages of ships, more or less. Okay. I was three hours late, so I probably just missed the character creation. No. no, this is a continuation of a game that we've had uh, on the go for a while. This is a this is also one of those games where I don't end up spending three hours in character creation. I know, wild, isn't it? But it is true. It is true. Uh, I would like to gather. Shadowbone isn't as important to me as some extra food. Let's gather as much food as we can. Slavian's probably. Ooh. 
Okay. You're approached by an odd company of three. The first, an elf, introduces themselves as Angela. Yeah, I, I remember this now. The second is a fat goblin with grey beard and a red coat who tells you he is Mikolas. The last one is clearly a short, riding his white coat. They bow and ask to join your camp. <laughs> I love this, this quest, I really do. Agree. Welcome, exclaims Mikolas. Each one of us can offer you a duel of sorts. A splendid game, to be sure. The goblin is eerily cheerful, with the elf remains aloof and the short, well, it stares at you with a mischievous smile. That's your storytelling skills against Mikolas, as he sits by the fire and tells you of a faraway frozen land and his wife. Stand against Angel and their mystical skills, or arm wrestle the short. Politely decline. Politely decline and offer your food instead. Uh, we'll, we'll stand against Angel. Important question. Do I still live? Yes, you do. Okay, well, we mostly won. Your skill is tolerable. All three strangers nod and depart together. Okay, plus two mysticism for future planet. Not the best person to have gotten it, but, uh, oh well. We don't really get to choose. Breaking camp. We made quite a lot of... Got, uh, rather got quite a lot of wood there. Stumble across a creature lying atop a slab of stone. At first, he seems to be resting, but as you close in, you see he's breathing heavily and his skin is smoldering under the sun's rays. You recognize this to be Smetic the Short. You helped. Try to help the creature. You try to move the Short from the stone, but he is stuck there by an invisible force. He moans in pain. A shack appears and speaks to you. Leave it be. The mongrel, uh, the mongrel beast broke rules. It's demon law. Please leave. Ask the shack what is happening here. A short made a pact to save his own skin. The other side paid its dues. Yet yeah, this fiend sought to make trouble. Wounded pride, you see. Ask more of the pact and how the chart meant to break it. And the shack clearly speaks of your deal. Just leave this creature to the fate it deserves. The deal you made, in that case, kill the fiend. I'll ask more about the pact. He hired the services of a Kolbuk demon to steal from those who, in his eyes, disrespected him. But the Kolbuk was a loyal subject, so we were able to put a stop to this infringement. Good. Demon laws are sacred. Bid the shank farewell and leave the short to his well-deserved fate. Scallywag, we helped you with your swollen tooth and everything. No harm came to you, and this seems cruel. No, no, no. Demon laws are demon laws. For a reason. And we've ended up with a pet shack. Okay, and a bunch of mental blessings for everyone. And the forest demons and the night demons are both happier because we obeyed their laws, or rather respected their laws. Never help the scallywag. Our own personal Theodore. I think he's like second or third personal Theodore we've got. But actually, that's a really nice gathering. It's wow. Okay. Uh, Jake Toady, what is yours? Uh, 4.7, 4. .7, 4 yeah, no, we've got exactly this. Oh, yes, and I've... <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, do you remember this chat? Do you remember the chuckle we had over this when we when we worked out what this rabbit was made of? Mythical leather and bee jelly. Mm, fairy magic, I tell you. All right, okay. Well, that scallywag got what he deserved. Let's go deal with the unliving crypt. You find a haunted lair filled with the roaming unliving. Magic user, attack them spiritually. It's going to be an easy fight. The unliving are destroyed, and so you should have some peace for now. I right, don't need that sword. Don't want wooden armor. Don't mind the mushrooms, the dried wood, the dark wood, the shadow bone, or the bone. Thank you very much. Mostly, though, I am very happy to have gotten the research points. We're now at 10 of 30. Right, let's march on down to the divine path. And then finally, we'll go over to the light bringers as well. Oh, damn, I just woke up. Did I miss out on a lot? Uh, we've been going for a little while. Oh, three hours. 
we haven't missed out on too much. We've completed a quest or two. <laughs> Lord bless this fine hand grenade. Indeed, but remember, should count to three. No more, no less. Do not count to two, nor to four. Five is right out. As is probably one. Well, I suspect the consequence of throwing it at one are less severe than the consequence of throwing it at five. Just got a hunch. Hmm. For my gatherer, I mean, perception is a good secondary stat for gathering, so sure. We can go and have a chat with the Slavians, actually. Improve our, uh, convince them that we're friendly. Gain. Uh, well, you do seem like a good sort. We didn't gain any uh, data tincture, uh, though I'm sure Chad is very happy about that. Uh, but we did gain some standing with the Slavians. But as a raptor, yes, you are absolutely safe. Uh, I don't think you're with the expedition right now. No, you're back at uh, Dragon's Rest. And doing well for yourself. You have got uh, a recently made pretty swanky crossbow that we built for you, which has area of effect life leech. With a 1.3 multiplier on your perception, and it also adds 2.6 seconds of delay to anyone it hits. It's quite a nice one. It is shiny, yeah. You've also got malachite robes. Uh, and that's, that's about it right now. Uh, I think you, yeah, you got a got a a dog, an upgraded dog that isn't made of bones and meat. It's in fact made of dragon bone and eggs. Don't ask why. It just is. But it's very, very much better than the uh, previous one that you had. Hmm. Kind of tempted though. Could you? No, no one, no one here can even lift this, so I guess not. Never mind. A dragon dog, indeed. All right. Looks like we're passing a turn here. We can't reach anything to scavenge. Uh, sorry, to uh, gather. So we'll just go into the divine path area. Oh, we got some coal from the well. Fantastic. You come to the place the crow sent you to unlock your chosen path. It is a hillside with a small pine grove atop it. It seems like nothing was here at first, but you feel the pull of the divine, and as you follow it, you notice a gathering of hooded figures performing a ritual. They are witches performing a burial for a sister, but it's not a ritual re you recognize. Approach and greet the courtier. Or the Zerka, they seem to be performing a burial rite that is unknown to you, yet strangely familiar. Approach them politely and speak to them. Um, well, we've got a witch, so we may as well talk to them as witches. One of what the witches steps aside and approaches you calmly. She takes off her hood and speaks. Ah, sister of the young gods, welcome. May I ask how you broke our protection veil? Tell her of the crow and how it guided you here. A crow, you say? So... She decides to meddle after all. Interesting. We are the Vaidmar Coterie, and we walk the path of Velis, even though his name is but a whisper now. We perform the rite of passage into his care for our fallen. When he returns, she will await him. Naya is the mistress of death. Who is this Velis they speak of? A demon. Valis is one of the the gods you can play in Thea 1. And again, Thea 2, basically the pantheon has changed. Though some of the gods are still recognized. Um, even if perhaps it's more of an echo. Valis definitely isn't strictly recognized in the pantheon anymore. Whereas Mokosh, for example, is. Um, but Valis is, has more or less... Well, not been replaced so much as there is a new god who in some ways has a bit of an overlap with his domain but he isn't he's little known of now she is now 
She was ever a servant of death, and two others stood above her in the past. Velis is not a harbinger of death. He is a gatekeeper and master of the underworlds. If you truly walk the chosen path, you will sacrifice something precious to us. Only then will we share the enlightenment you seek here. We could probably win this. Ask them more about Valis first. Why do the witches worship a forgotten god? Agree and offer them the entire spirit essence of one person. Agree and offer them the entire mental essence of a person. Blood is the most potent of essences for witchcraft, especially if given freely. Offer to bleed one of your you entirely for the witches. Uh, ask more. He gave magic to the mortals, of course. Thus, we honor him still. Marovitz is the keeper of magic. Horus also masters this domain. Are they related to this Valis? They are now, but they were not so in the past. The gods are not stagnant. They change as we do, as the world does. What happened to this god? We do not know. It is as if a shroud was cast over all our minds. We know our father, yet we do not. Your gods seem similarly afflicted, disjointed from their full selves. Thus, you as their chosen are equally broken, or at least unwhole. Ask again how you can find out the full story. If you truly walk the chosen path, oh. you will sacrifice something precious to I'll us. try, Only but this may go badly. Share the enlightenment you seek here. Instead of an offering, challenge the witch to a spiritual duel in line with ancient traditions. Okay, we're going to be facing a couple of ghosts with high amounts of spirit there. Ghost touch, how much damage can you do? Uh, 27 each, that's a bit dangerous. Um, a bear, probably not going to be a threat at all. It can't do anything in the spiritual battle, it literally does no damage. The alpha wolf... Also, largely, I said attractive alpha wolf too. Um, largely incapable of hurting us, and a uh, youth youth tamer. Uh, okay, magic user attractive. Uh, weakness, an orc. Use brute force, probably at yeah, thirteen point five. So really, it's the it's the ghosts that I've got to worry about here. I could also resolve it, and we'll probably get through quite fine. But I'm I'm gonna go for a manual one this one this time. Ooh, this is a tight battle as well. Okay. They already move fairly slowly, but they do a lot. I think I'm gonna have to play Dark Ever twice in this one. Scary. I mean, I'd need to play you to. I don't have enough turns to do that. Okay. Problem is, they do a lot of damage, each one. Okay. Okay. The way we're going to play this is I am going to get. Summon creature out. It just does straight attack damage. So, that being said, you'd be able to weather a lot of damage, to be fair. Um, you could stand there as a, as a decent blocker for it, but honestly, you're probably just as good. Now I can swap positions. I could summon two unliving rats with this. Go. So we've now got a lot of of um, damage absorption. Okay, 
slowing us down, but that's fine. You're not going to be able to do anything. So at this point, I can play a second Dark Avac. And turn. No matter what, they're only going to be able to get through two of my units before the fight begins. So now I can use two points. One to buff. Now that has actually reduced uh, those attacks. We're reducing my overall strength, but that has brought it up for both characters. And now I'm going to swap around your turn order. Also buff their armor a little bit. There we go. Right, let's see what you do. Okay, you've got seven cards back there. I'll get through the two rats. Dark Avac will finish them off. Okay. Now we'll get three attacks on the four remaining cards. Oh, they're back up to five. That's an interesting one. I don't know why Dark Havoc is still on the grid, but sure. Point one. Okay, so reduced strength again. Uh, I'm not going to use up health this time. I don't think we're going to need it. There's two bears, a wolf. One more ghost, and a, uh, a youth tamer, an orc. I don't think they can even play the bears. I don't think they have any... Well, actually, no, they've got brute force, so they can be played. But it's not really going to matter much. They're going to be able to play one more unit after this. Um, they're going to be gone pretty much straight away. So I'm going to play you into position. And I'm going to... Honestly, I'm not I'm not going to move Dark Havoc up. Well, actually, yeah, I will move Dark Havoc up. Because the Youth Tamer may have a faster turn than 7.1. Yeah, this is my witch. Yeah. Oh, uh, in their deck, it was a youth tamer. It was an orc. Okay, playing again. More, gonna start buffing your speed. Turn, see who gets played. Okay, double spirit, okay. Our witch can play this spirit so that we can easily act first. Are they going to bring out the Ryutheim? No, they're going to go for a triple spirit there. That's really, really interesting. They're just desperately trying to avoid playing that card. If it can even be played, because it might not have any applicable ability for this combat. Didn't actually need to do that, because Dark Havoc was already going first. But, uh, or rather, our team... Dark Havoc would go before any of them, but it's fine. As you can see, they're already low on health because each time we defeated everything and just started attacking the, the deck, we eventually got through it.
You are indeed a chosen of magic or intellect to wield such precise power. I accept this as your offering and will grant the knowledge you seek. Here, drink this and receive the gifts of our father. That is pretty good. Again, that's basically two levels worth of upgrades into the right stats as well for Dark Havoc. Yeah, the youth table must have been wiped out in the hand. When I saw one up in the deck, I assumed that meant that there was one left that wasn't being played, but it seems that that is measuring also the cards on the uh, on the battlefield. Oh, it is but a humble beginning of your path, dear Chosen. We spoke of our father to you, but even we are veiled from his true self. Memories fading, traditions falling. You must go to the ancient forest, and there seek out the burial of our father. We will pray that you learn of his fate there, and in doing so, unlock your own power and that of your deity. Thank them and leave. Alright, Divine Path has got a new part to it. Is that lead though? Oh, doesn't have any other quest location. It seems not yet. Anyway, okay, we're gonna probably come across it on one of the one of the islands then. Yeah, can't see anything yet. So we've not come across it yet. But that was that was very nice. That level level up for Dark Arvik was really good. 27 mysticism and 19 destiny. I would still like to get destiny up a little bit more, but it's definitely coming along. Definitely coming along. Got a fair bit of movement left, so let's go and check out the uh, Red Ridge Bandits. So, you done the deed? I'm not going to tell them I killed the scavengers. They've left. It's fine. Yes, the Babi Yaga is dead. Excellent. Now, we said we'd consider letting you in the cave if you did the job, so I'm considering. I didn't say you did as you were asked, and all you need is entry to the cave. Ah, you did well. Go in, look round the cave to your heart's desire. We ain't going to bother you or your old friend. I came and go and inform the alchemist. There we go. And I guess that is the alchemist. Uh, we can almost get there, sadly not quite. We've still got some of the newbie island to investigate yet, which is kind of funny. Oh, nice feature. Planet just got an upgrade, either to protective wood to offer a stupid amount of protection or to ghostly axe. Ghostly Axe is getting nasty now. But that protection is pretty pretty bonkers. That 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 could like against the the enemies we're fighting, this could actually give someone an extra turn before they start losing any health. My dead brain forgot to put the kettle on. It's okay. The kettle's still there. I love this game, but losing so many hours in crafting what if, or maybe the... <laughs> yeah, I know. The best thing to do is use the design and just kind of get an idea of where you want to go. But go to the axe at 30 damage, though. We already did 32 without maneuver, so that's fine. 24 there. Uh, what's our bow do? Oh, I mean, we've got a nice bow. Honestly, I'm going to go with protective wood. It gives you a little bit more tactical flexibility. You finally enter the Red Cave, and you now realize the meaning of its name. The walls and floor are rough, layered with blood-red moss and black veins. Faint crimson light lingers beneath this odd canopy, pulsating quietly in slow rhythm. Wait to see what the alchemist wants to do. He stares, his mouth wide open and eyes lit up, and gestures for you to move forwards. You move through this odd tunnel and 
would find several paths, some leading to small alcoves that are clearly used by the bandits as storage. Wish the dialogue was a bit louder. are entirely collapsed. The only remaining way leads to what looks like an entrance to another larger tunnel. But there is a membrane blocking the way. Magic user examine it. Dwarf or goblin, search the entire entrance for a mechanism. Orc or strength, everything breaks. And this will too. Magic users examine the barrier. You examine the structure of this barrier and sense ancient weaves of magic combined with a life of its own, as well as the artifice of dwarves. Through magic, you can weaken the weaves and thus hopefully walk through. Uh, dwarf or goblin, search this entrance for a mechanism. Although magic and other mysteries are clearly at work here, you also spot the unmistakable craft of dwarf and smiths. You uncover the mechanism that should open the barrier, but it will not be easy to master. Sadly, I don't get to go back. I, I kind of wanted to do the other one, but I wanted to see what this one did. the ancient mechanism, and with much care, you find the right combination to make it work. The barrier opens, allowing you to enter. You stand in a dark chamber, covered still in the strange moss. But here, you see a deep hole in the middle, the earth and stone around it torn from within. And from this hole, cracks spread out like the sun's rays. They are small here, yet you see bright light within, and you sense enormous power within, pulsating, spreading. And yet, from your divine connection, you also sense that this is a mere outlet, not the source. Okay. Turn to the alchemist, Francis. Fascinating. I've heard of such things. Of course, inanimate yet living is not a thing of myth in Slavia. No, but at this scale? This cave, it has residues of great power, but also echoes of life. Alas, I admit, I need help if I am to solve this. Ask if I can help. Unless you happen to be a dwarven stonemaster, or perhaps an ancient who still remembers, no. We need to search for an expert. I will of course remain here, study this cave more. Ask where to search? That is an excellent question. I would wager that traveling to the lands of stone and metal where dwarven survivors now dwell is a sure bet. Now, you could also look for some elder long ears, bam, elves that is. Once they're old enough, the likelihood that they meld in the affairs of the world grows exponentially. Find them in ancient forests, and who knows, maybe goblins or orc know something. Just remember to find their villages, not just random folk. Any other options? Failing that, I do know a place, but it will be a matter of brute force and likely much more difficult. A dwarven smith of great renown is held captive by trolls. I happen to know where. Go, free him, and he will be on about to aid you. Thank you for the help, and leave to search for the expert. Now, that quest is here. Fairly certain. Although that looks like a tree. Oh, maybe it is. The, I'm fairly certain that the the option to go and get the Dwarven Smith is on the starter aisle. And it's a really tough battle. But we are a very strong group right now. and I, I, You can complete the game without ever actually leaving the main... Well, I think you may have to go just towards the end, just to another island. But you can do the vast majority of the game on the starter island if you want to. Um, we've got the Goblin Lands over here. The Elven Lands up there. The Orc Lands here. The Dwarf Lands down there, I think. And over here, this is like an Iceland where um, night demons live. I'm in the mood to explore all of the world. I, do, I don't want to just rush the quest. So, with that, let's head on back. So, next island over the dwarf, leave the elves. Go for the dwarfs or the orcs. Uh, we're going to go to the goblins first, actually. Sumi. Being that our chosen is a goblin. I think that might make more sense. Um, also, the Goblin Island is kind of cool. And doing quests with the goblins is also pretty cool. Welcome, Chosen. I can't stay in chat, but I hear you are making progress in solving this whole shattering business. I was sent to give you this and wish you luck. The gods watch over you. Bye. All right. We've now got a cosmic seed. Do you know what this means? This means three things. Chat, you may guess. You may guess what these three things mean. Another settlement. Sumi has gotten guess number one right. A ring. Mithril has got guess number two right. It's 
still a third option that the uh, seed can be used for. Tea break? No, we've had one of those. Good guess, though, but... Cosmic tea? I wish. There we go. Demi of Derp got the third one. Revive Avak in case he gets extra clumsy. Yeah, pretty much. Those are the three uses for the Cosmic Seed. If you die as the Chosen, you... Well, Naya changes it a little bit for us, because if we die, we can come back as a as an unliving. But we would be a completely different creature as a result, and would have different skills. We would probably lose the amazing ability that we've got, the Ground Shake. But... If you've got the seed, you can just exchange the seed to keep your chosen alive. The other option is we can make another village. You can you can have more than one. And the third is we can use it to make the one ring. Oh, did I miss your answer, Diggum? Oh, there yeah, yeah, you did. The the dragon, uh, Rose, thank you. So, uh, Roslyn, sorry. Thank you for catching that. Yeah, you did, so, to be fair. Right. Well, we've got some level ups. Uh, hmm, our healer can level up completely safe pill or protective word. Uh, either one is kind of junky right now. Let's go with protective word. And raptor, we're just going to go with perception because uh, you're a hunter. It makes the most sense. We're going to have our little expedition go and smack these uh, undead around. Hurricanes engulfs you. Try to find shelter quickly. You find a crack in the earth where you can wait the hurricane out, but it will take effort to hold steady. We'll easily get that one done. You manage to stay in place and the hurricane passes by, leaving some debris behind. The wind brought us some presents. Very nice of it. Unfortunately, we're going to have to just straight up have a fight here. Okay, I'm going to resolve this manually. Now, the auto-resolve is going to give us a wound. Let's see if we can't do better. You do do quite a lot of damage, to be fair, don't you? Wow. Be far away from you. And I would like something that can hold your attention. If possible. It'll absorb one attack. Pop it there in front of Dark Havoc for now. Okay, adding a bit of extra shield into it. That's going to go through. No, it didn't. Okay. All right. You're going to stab straight through and hit Dark Havoc, but you're not going to do much damage, which is a good thing. Epicalypticon can do a decent amount of damage and stun, but I don't really want to put you out there in the middle of the way. Still, this is kind of what you're here for, really. So sure, go ahead. Yeah, we need to, to weaken that armor a little bit in order to be able to take you out in the first wave of battle. Now, thankfully, they're using a lot of their points to buff, which is going to work strongly to our favor. Mm. Yeah, we're going to play Dark Havoc twice. Now, that's a bold move, depending on what they play next. This could might not work out well for us. Uh, it did work out well for us, it's fine. Okay, so next up, we are going to swap you two over, because we're going to take the uh, instance of Dark Havoc that is going to take the longest to get to play and move it to the very front of the queue. A little bit of extra shielding. And with that, you're going to get an attack, but it won't matter too much. You won't be able to get through... Oh, actually, no. No, it was someone else who was going to go first. Never mind. 
Okay. So, whereas the auto-resolve wasn't going to be able to get us through that perfectly, we did because we were a little bit more tactical. Uh, great sword, we don't need those at all. Dark spear, no, still junk. Oh. Mm. That's good enough to keep, but it's not good enough to equip. <sighs> anyway, to get a third seed, I I actually don't know. I think you might be able to get a third seed, but I've never gotten one myself. Uh, a tailor traveling with bodyguards visits your village. I'm the best tailor you will find on this rickety island. I deal only with light goods. None of that ugly heavy sword. Please, take a look. Trade, sure. What you got? Hey, you got some good items there. Uh, mythical- Wow. Wow. Combat robes. They're worth a lot. Granted. But dear lord, they're amazing. Let's see what we can do to trade. Got a lot of random gubbins that I don't care about. That I am happy to trade off. Am I ever going to be able to get to that kind of money? I don't know. <laughs> I've got a shack. Worth quite a lot. Pets can be worth stupid amounts, actually. 